Hey guys, welcome to another Trade Genius Podcast. Bob and Phil here, as always. Fed pause today. We're gonna tell you what that means because we think not only did they pause, they're probably done, and that's gonna line up with some very bearish macro signals that we're gonna discuss in today's videos. You guys need to see this because it's very important for your portfolios. Let's dive in. Trade Genius. Hey guys, I'm gonna tell you something that we do that really will change the way in which you look at trading and also absolutely help you increase your profitability and how much money you make. It's the Trade Genius newsletter. We put the newsletter out Sunday night through Thursday night. And this really looks at the plumbing of the markets and helps prepare you for the next trading day and help you make money. And, and we give you a lot of information. We give you market statistics. We give you market levels. We give you the seasonality, what's happening with different sectors of the market. And we will help you identify whether the market's in a bear mode or a bull mode, or whether it's euphoric, whether it's despondent. And it just puts you in a position to be on the right side of the trade. So Take advantage of our offer that we have below and you'll love it. I mean, one trade that you make with this thing can pay for definitely a month, maybe even a year's worth of service. It's that powerful. Use promo code podcast for 15% off the retail price of newsletter. Thanks for listening. Okay, Bob. So Powell came out much as we expected and the market expected and they did not raise. The question is how much of that hawkishness that they kind of talked about going forward into next year and, and the year after is really going to manifest. I think that they're going to get their bluff called, you know, before the market was trying to call their bluff. I think now going forward, the decline in the economy, I think that's going to call their bluff. And not only are they not going to raise, we're going to start seeing cuts next year. What do you think? Well, you know, it's interesting. First of all, they everybody expected, you know, uh, them to pause. Their dot plot's still hawkish, but there's no way they can raise rates anymore no matter what they say they're 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 done we may try to manage it through qt but i agree with you i think regardless of what they say going into 2024 they're going to be cutting like crazy and here's a chart to show you why phil check look at this chart yeah. this is the lag chart uh look going back you know almost 25 years now and it shows you that there's a lag effect that uh, has a high correlation and what it's showing us now is that we've been slip sliding away here since the, the beginning of june you know bull market part two ended then and we just been slip sliding away and you know barring any crazy ivan maybe v here um reaction off of uh, the sell-off today but going into next week and probably through october maybe even into november Remember, the correlation says down and down a um, pretty good amount. If you look at this chart, Phil, it's pretty amazing. And then it looks like we get a Santa rally. Yeah. So in uh, the green isn't necessarily the S&P 500. It's the percentage change. So they just slid the S&P 500 back to show you how it correlates. So we're looking, the blue line is the current state of affairs. And so what it's telling you now is that where we are in the S&P 500, we're looking at um, pretty decent declines in percentage terms going forward. And that's what we warned you guys about into Q4. And what lines up with that as well is, you know, as we've beaten to death is Yellen, right? She's She was pumping the market with, with T-bills and that's going to change going into Q4 here. So we're, we're kind of at the last point, I think, where you can have a decent uh, hedge uh, hedging area, uh, especially above 4,500, and then prepare for that drop. And then, you know, that lines up with other macro things, right, Bob? Like, you know, we have credit cycles and, and we have default cycles, and the default cycle chart is really scary. Yeah, flip this next chart up here. We're rolling up. You know, and Powell, I mean, he makes me cringe when he talks because he, he talks about these things as if they're not humans being affected by this. You know, he's saying we're looking, to, we're looking for more unemployment. You know, those are people's lives that they're playing with. They could have just not done what they've done instead right. of screwing people's lives up. Now we're getting a massive default cycle. And the one thing about default cycles that people don't understand is not like you and I could default and say, well, that was a good try. I'm going to go to the bank next week and start over. Right. You're kind of screwed for three to seven years, okay, until you know your credit gets repaired or the government comes in and offers incentives, you know, or the next generation comes in and doesn't have their credit destroyed yet. I mean, right. when you look at two 2008, when that rolled over, things didn't kind of feel normal again till you got to like 2015, 2016. You know, right. when, when you started seeing maybe some of those animal spirits start coming back into vogue again. I think Phil, this is why I, I'm I'm in the camp of it, of basically the you know the L. Okay, yeah. You know, we're gonna go into 25. I think it's gonna be a brutal political environment. You know, the Republicans or what's left of them are not gonna give Biden the slush funds that he wants and needs and desires for the election, which means the 
there's less liquidity there while Powell's pulling away liquidity. And then Janet Yellen has no choice but to pull liquidity in which she went with her mix and interest rates. So and then, you know, every time you get a default, and this is something I always have to explain to people, people don't understand really what a dollar is. You know, they think the dollar is what's in your pocket. The dollar is what's in your pocket, but it's also what got borrowed into existence. You know, just like short selling. Short selling brings shares into existence that didn't exist before. And when you squeeze those people, you know, that's how you wring it out. When you default, that's how you wring out the money supply. And Powell will get his wish. He will knock inflation down. He may not knock the cost of living down, Phil, but he'll knock inflation down because he's basically going to impoverish the nation to do so. I agree. And I think this macro, you know, bond default rate ties in with some of the other macro cycles that we saw, the yield cycles, you know, corporate credit cycles, and going back to not only, you know, our economy, but even things like, you know, the Bitcoin cycles too. And I think you can see where, you know, Bitcoin was created in 2009. But if you look at where these default cycles peak, when they're going up into that peak, you know, Bitcoin does not start a bull run. It The bull run only starts after these things have, these default cycles have peaked. And that's another reason why, as far as like how crypto goes, because I know a lot of you guys are concerned about that cycle. I think it's still, you know, we have to see, I think the macro has a lot to do with that. Um, and, and we're going to get that answer here as well on that. So this is a very uh, dicey spot in terms of equities, in terms of crypto, in terms of the economy, employment, all of that stuff. I think that lag chart, I'll go back to that real quick. That lag chart, I think, is all you need to know uh, in terms of where this thing is headed. Oh, when I saw that chart, I said, we have to share that. And then, you know, oil's going into its two month of seasonal uh, weakness too. So you're not going to get the benefit of, of energy pushing up, you know, and so all the sectors now are lined up for a, a retrenchment. With all this leverage out there, Phil, you know, a simple retrenchment can literally be, you know, turn into a crash, which we're not calling for. But right. it just, we just don't know. What we don't know about what's out there and how leveraged and how fragile you know entities are. So, right. but you know, for this week, typically when the Fed day is down, they come back in and adjust Thursday and Friday. And if the Fed day is up, a lot of times Thursday is a sell off. So I think whatever happens this week, you can't really you know count it. But going into next week, you know, we could pass Yom Kippur if the market's still weak going into the end of the month then and then i think we're uh, we're hell's bells yeah i think that's trouble um you know seasonally we're in that week period right for the s p 500 the last uh, week and a half of september that being said we haven't seen a ton of with the reverse repo which has been fueling this market we haven't seen a lot of that come off yet as term in terms of fueling the market although it has cooled a little bit so we have to keep an eye on that if it starts to roll, roll back over in terms of building back up which uh in terms of liquidity is rolling over for the market it, then that becomes an issue. But the bears are definitely in control short term here, Bob. We're under the weekly nine EMA. We were threatening to possibly close this week under the weekly nine EMA. So that means that the S&P 500 needs to get back over 45 or 4450, excuse me. We're down to, or 4550. We're down to 40, what is it? 4400, I think we hit on the S&P 500 today. That's a huge support yeah. level. They have to get it back uh, about 50 points higher at 4450. That's kind of the key line in the sand now for this market. If they can and, and the bulls got another stick save going into the weekly close. But otherwise, what we typically will see is that 44.50 rejects, okay? That could push us down even further. And that's where we get that seasonality scenario that we were discussing. And you do get an ugly close to September. And then October, you're not going to get much reprieve either because as we told you guys, the macro forces and the debt issuance is going to be all but guaranteeing a red month there. So we got a lot of headwinds here. Bulls have a lot of work cut out for them after today's reaction. Uh, I'm with you, Bob. I think we get a short-term bounce because that's typically what they do. They paint a real ugly candle here on the SPX on the daily bearish engulfing, but it wasn't at a high of a move. So those typically get head faked. Uh, and I would be surprised if we saw a gap up tomorrow. May not happen, but that's that's a lot of times what they do after a day like this, especially after FOMC. So yeah. we'll see what you we know, get. They, so the other thing mm -hmm. too is these last three bearish engulfing patterns, they paint it. The next day they did gap it up as an inside day. Then really you have to watch what, if they if they claw back more than half of it, they're going to try to lift it. If they right. can't, it rolls back over. Then you know that's what I'm looking to um, 
you know, get short again, um, right. you know, in size. But yeah, so that's, you have to watch this stuff. Because what they want you to do, they wanted everybody to short into this hole, thinking that the Fed, you know, the market screwed, the Fed has spoken. And it's just, it's just to provide liquidity, you know, for a squeeze. And then, you know, then we just got to watch it after tomorrow going into Friday. Yeah, and it's funny you bring that up because I remember when we had that bear uh, video, we said a massive bear signal is because we had that bearish engulfing at the very tippy top high, right? It's the end of a move, which which is different than like today's candle because today's candle's happening after we've already come down. So there's a big difference in how they print those. But I remember the next two days we had inside candles, meaning that the day's range was inside that big bearish engulfing candle. I remember specifically yeah. we were getting a little bit trolled on, you know, oh, you guys said it was, you know, bear signal and we had up days for two days and we said look that candle means that that high is in and sure enough the high was in once that week wrapped up and the following week we sold off and we haven't been back since so no, um, they had, uh, remember it was an inside day of an inside day of an inside day then it collapsed so yeah um that's just a reaction you get the other thing too is that i think the volume on this sell-off was extremely light i think right. all today was people that had leveraged long bets when they didn't get the reaction remember coming out of the uh the initial balance of the Fed statement, I think they sold off. Right. So I think it was basically a an unwind of looking for a ramp for the pause. So overnight, guys, if you're curious, if you're watching the futures, look at yesterday's futures candle daily low. We start moving back over that. We may get that gap up scenario and that green inside day scenario that Bob's talking about. If you guys are wanting to monitor that overnight. Otherwise, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Let us know what you think. What was your takeaway from the FOMC uh, today? Do you think that they're, they're done? They imply they got one more raise. What do you think? And let us know what you think on this lag graph. Do you think that that's going to become reality or do you think we're going to buck the trend this time? Haven't seen it for a while. Been over a decade. This thing hasn't lied. So love to hear your thoughts on that. Bob, thanks for the charts. Guys, thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe and also check out our specials over at tradegenius.co. We would love to see you guys in the room and help you navigate these markets day to day. We'll see you on the next video. Take care. Trade Genius.